A typical solar cell forfeits 80% of the energy available to it. Some of this loss occurs within the solar cell itself, where the energy was absorbed but lost during transport within the cell. More energy is lost from this cause alone than a typical solar cell produces in total. If we could fix this, we can more than double solar cell efficiency. Luckily, we can model the solution after nature. She has learned to transfer the energy absorbed in photosynthesis nearly without loss. She has become a quantum magician. And so if we could use the quantum tricks of biology and synthetic technology, we could make magicians of our own solar cells, making them more efficient, more practical to satiate our growing energy appetite as a species and to mitigate the impending doom of atmospheric carbon via renewable energy sources. To perform photosynthesis, plants, for example, utilize solar energy with their chloroplasts. And each chloroplast has several hundred molecules of a pigment that captures light energy called chlorophyll. However, each chloroplast only has a few places that can make use of this energy. So, when light is absorbed by a chlorophyll molecule, this energy needs to move to one of these places. But that could be very far away. Originally, we believed that this energy moved randomly between molecules towards the general direction of the reaction site. This is as if the energy stumbled, without a map, from one corner of a maze to the other. But rarely would it reach the reaction site. But if this was true, most of the energy would be lost heat from the hundreds of handoffs, just as water is lost from a bucket when transferred. But this is not what happens. Instead, somehow, the energy migrates remarkably efficiently. Currently, one part of the leading theory on this contends that after light energy is captured by chlorophyll, that molecule will occasionally vibrate in synchrony with another molecule nearby. When this happens, the captured energy can move between the now united molecules with very little loss. This is called quantum coherence. But why does this happen? Say, for example, you're on the swings of someone else. This quantum coherence is like how it's substantially easier to hand someone something when you're swinging in phase with them rather than when not in phase. This is how energy is able to smoothly make its way towards the reaction site of the chloroplast. Once this energy reaches its destination, it can then be used to carry out the chemical processes that produce carbohydrates, which fuel not only the plant, but whatever eats it. The energy here scales the food chain and allows for the abundant, complex life on Earth. Normally, quantum effects are so volatile that they can only be studied in artificial, isolated, and cold laboratory environments. And so before the discovery of the quantum effects in photosynthesis, no one thought that quantum mechanics could contribute into such a large-scale process, especially given the high temperatures and chemical chaos present here in biology. MIT scientists laughed at this when it was originally discovered. But soon, it became clear. Photosynthesis truly is a quantum magician. And that yes, in every leaf on the planet, quantum mechanics is what enables the largest source of free energy on Earth to enter the food chain. That's why I think quantum biology is really cool.